On this episode of Ghost Hunters International, the team travels to Tasmania to investigate a courthouse known for death. This is a scene of 32 executions. Rob is a witness to the poisonous legend of Ivy's room. Ivy, why do you tell people to get out of here? Holy crap, what the hell is that? While the team hands out rough justice to the ghost of the Supreme Courthouse. State your name and your plea. Did you hear something? It sounded like it was coming from behind me. Then, the team heads to Malaysia to seek out the unsettled Hindu spirits of Kelly's castle. Could you step out into the hallway? What the heck is that? What will Dustin and Barry encounter in this century-old castle? Are there any spirits here? What the hell is that? Starting to get goosebumps. Tasmania, and Brandy's going to let us know the details of the case. Hey, we are headed to the Tasmanian Supreme Courthouse, and uh, this place was built in the 1800s. The building was originally used as a prison in reform until about 1860, and then after the prison facilities closed, it was used as a Supreme Courthouse and then changed to the Magistrate Courthouse in 1975. Now, criminals who were held here were tried and some were sentenced to death by hanging, which was carried out in the execution yard. Now, a lot of the claims include full-bodied apparitions, dark shadows, phantom smells. Brandon, I know that uh, pretty much Tasmania, the whole place was uh, used as, uh, you know, a penal colony. So how does this place tie in with uh, things like Port Arthur? When people would come to the courthouse, if they were reoffenders or they were too unruly to be held at the courthouse in their small cells, they would actually be transferred to Port Arthur, which was a higher security prison system. Definitely sounds like an interesting case. Um, we've never done a courthouse with a execution yard before, so hope everyone is amped up and ready to go. Brian? Oh. How are you? Pleased to meet you. Very nice to meet you. This is Dustin, Dustin. Barry. Hi. Barry. Welcome to the Penitentiary Chapel and Criminal Courts Building. We're really grateful you could come out and do some investigation work here. Um, I've been involved with the building now for 25 years. We've seen some and heard some interesting things. It was originally built in 1831. The building was used as the, a church for the convicts that arrived from England. Over the 50 years, about 75,000 convicts arrived and went through this building. In 1860, they needed a bigger courtroom. Because of these large numbers of repeat offenders, they converted to criminal courts. The whole building then became Hobart Jail, right through till um, the 1960s. But the courtrooms, they stayed in use till 1975. Well, if you could take us around, kind of show us where the hot spots, tell us what happened, and if we could pose some questions for you, uh, we can Certainly. get out of the way. All right, we'll let's follow go. You. OK, we're in courtroom two. This was a smaller courtroom. Quite recently, I was just coming through this area here, and there was a female voice that just said, out. I, I looked around, there was, the doors were closed, there was no one in, else in the building. And what do you think it was? We have a presence here called Ivy. She's probably the best known one. Ivy normally manifests herself by her perfume. You walk in through a door, and suddenly you'll just get this aura of perfume behind you. Turn round, and it'll be gone. And that's happened to me on quite a few occasions and a lot of other people as well. And so I presumed the other day that it was Ivy telling me to get out for some reason, I don't know why. Why is it that uh, you attribute the name Ivy to her? The name Ivy came up, I think someone just thought of the name some time ago. Anything else in this area? Some time ago, early in this year, I was in here with a couple of my volunteers. It was in the morning, there was only the three volunteers here. I saw something move. And I looked straight over to the dock where the prisoners were brought up, and there was a hand holding it. And as soon as I said, a hand, it moved away. We instantly ran over to it to make sure that, you know, there's nobody there, and there wasn't. And nobody could move that quietly. It's the rickety stairs. 
I was actually shook up. That stuff doesn't happen to me. So this is courtroom one. The Chief Justice sat in this courtroom here and handed out the death sentences in the dock there. Now, this is the door here that opens. As you can see, to open it, it's got a little bit of a catch, and it shouldn't just open by itself. No. And yet, the times it's done it, when I've seen it, it's come from there, just a nice smooth opening right up back there. The first time I saw it, we had some visitors here putting on a play. Halfway through the play, the door just opened right up. And at the end of the play, I talked to the man who was playing a part of a judge, and I apologised for the door opening. And he said, that's OK, I saw who opened it. And I said, but there was no one there. And he said, oh, no, it wasn't a person, it was a presence. And when I asked him what the presence was like, he couldn't explain what it was like. Where exactly uh, was he seated when he saw this door? He was seated up in the, in the judge's chair. This gallows here was the scene of 32 executions, including one woman, from 1857 through to 1946. OK, once the, uh, the prisoner was standing on the trapdoor there, the, the executioner would adjust the noose around his neck and put a hood over his head. The deputy sheriff would give the signal, the execution would step back and pull the lead. Not a pleasant way to go. Down below there, we had a really unusual experience. I heard this funny noise behind me. So I swing around and I seen that the noose was swinging quite dramatically. And looked up and there was this fellow looking back at me. I could see through him. I moved across the room to make sure that what I was seeing was there. And his eyes followed me. And that was enough for me and I sort of ran out. Oh, we will definitely be investigating here very carefully. Good. Over the years, we had so many different things happen. People reported all sorts of unusual happenings. Right there. Yeah, perfect. So um, I decided that we had to do something about finding out what was going on, so I, I contacted GHI to investigate for us. We really need to know what is happening in the building. So if you put it right in that corner, shooting out this way, Paul and I got together to set up the, uh, his motion camera. I didn't bring it down underneath the gallows because we have the stories of the growl of some mystery animal as well as the uh, full-bite apparition that all appear in this area. So if one of these wander through, we got 15 seconds of video capturing it and documenting it. Barry, let's talk about some cameras. OK, uh, camera number one is the Lolux camera, and that's in courtroom one. Um, so that's covering the door that's said to open. Yep. Camera number two um, is the full spectrum camera. That's covering the uh, where the operation of the hand is said to appear on top of that, what leads into the tunnels. Camera number three um, is immediately outside uh, courtroom one. We want to see if there's any movement out there of anything. Camera number four is down in the uh, in the tunnels leading from courtroom one and two. All right, let's get the lights off. Okay. Okay. Ready? This is courtroom number one. This is actually where all the, the death penalty sentences were issued right there. Myself, Joe, Ashley, and Brandy came over to courtroom number one. I just had an interesting story to it. It's a door that's said to open on its own, and people have seen this presence or felt a presence that was opening the door. It's OK that I sit in this chair, right? Like, yep. it's not. <laughs> All you got to do is hit record twice, and you're off and running. Team dynamic was fantastic. What we did was everyone had a role, everyone had different pieces of equipment they were using, so we had this thing fully covered so that if anything paranormal was going to happen, we were going to make sure we definitely captured it. Well, for one, this door doesn't really click shut mm. at all. And it is kind of loose. Yeah. It's not susceptible to weight. What about on the other side, Joe? I wanted to see if there were any loose floorboards for movement. Um, I'm a rather large guy, so I figured I could kind of shift my weight around and see if I can get the door to ajar and open on its own. No, I've been jumping on the other side. And if you try to push it open, you got to give it a little bit of force. Well, let's get some advice from the other side. 
If there's anyone present in this courtroom, could you demonstrate how this door opens? Are any of the men who were sentenced to death in this room still present with us now? If you don't think that Brandy should be sitting in the judge's chair, I think that in the past you've demonstrated that you know how to move her out of there. Are there any prisoners from Port Arthur here? John Gould. Have you followed us? What's that? On our last investigation, there had been a lot of back and forth about a particular convict, John Gould. Now, John Gould probably came through here as well, so we kind of followed up on that, asked a couple questions. John Gould, if you're still here, Ashley's here. Not you. Please tell me that was one of you guys. Holy crap, what the hell was that? John Gould, if you're still here, Ashley's here. It's not you. Please tell me that was one of you guys. Holy crap, what the hell was that? <sighs> Rob decided to ask about a man named John Gould, who was a prisoner at the Port Arthur prison. We previously had an investigation out there, and I had quite an experience. John Gould. So I hear you scratch people. Why haven't you done that to one of us yet? Hey, can you, one of y'all come in here really quick? No, I was standing here, and I swear to God, I'm not kidding, I felt like something poked my knee, and then I felt like I was about to pass out, and I had to lean against the wall. It sounded like it came from there. I thought it was right over by me. Yeah, like your area. I'm standing perfectly still. There's someone here now attempting to manifest, to step forward. Last time Ashley interacted with you, you made contact. Is that something you plan on doing again? John Gould, are you in here? We ask about John Gould. Bam, there's a big slam in the courtroom. Um, you know, nothing else followed up after that. To me, it seems like a coincidence, but a well-timed one. Wow. Uh, yeah. Really? Just don't step on the trap door itself. Okay. So we got some strange activity out here. The noose is said to start swinging mm -hmm. on its own. Another guy who works here goes down underneath here, and turns around. There's a guy standing right next to him. Okay. Just staring at him, wearing like 19th century, you know, the, the clothes they would have yeah. worn here. Rob and I came to investigate the gallows here. It was a really uh, different experience for me. Whenever you walk into that, you kind of get that feeling of like just the sorrow because you know people spent their last moments here and they took their last breath with that rope around their neck if you can understand what we're saying we have devices that can capture your image just move the rope for us shouldn't cause too much problem for you or can you appear next to the rope? Can we actually see you? I'm trying to take your picture. Can we document you? Is there anyone beneath us? If you're down there, can you knock back? No, we're not here to cause you any harm or try to stir up any trouble. We just want to simply document the fact that you're here. Can you give us a sign that you're arrived? Check that again. Did you see something? It almost looked like there was something weird in the flash on that one. That's why I'm trying to take the same shot and see if I can get that same reflection. In one of the shots, 
as it's taking, it seems as if the flash kind of reflected off something large in the background. I mean, within five feet of Ashley and I. Just to keep a an eye on that wall, just so okay. see if this flash gives you like a weird after image from the shadow. Nah, it's not doing it now. Mm. All right, let's see here. I went back, I tried to look at it on the camera, but now I've got a two and a half inch screen that I'm trying to see if there's anything there. At this point, you know, I'm hoping that if there was anything paranormal, that I can hand it off to a team, and I know that, you know, I'm confident they'll be able to find exactly what it was that I thought I saw. Dustin, Paul, and I wanted to investigate quartering number one. And we sent a 360 mic, and I was on with remote control, the spectrum shooting toward the rear door. Court is now in session. You will show respect for this court and answer the questions asked of you. State your name and your plea. Would you approach the bench so we can see you? What say you against the charges placed against you? Were you guilty or not guilty? What explanation do you offer for your actions? I could have sworn I heard something there just before I clicked that camera. Did you hear something low? Mm-hmm. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, how do you find the defendant? What is your decision? Stay still. Did you hear something? Mm -hmm. it sounded like it was coming from behind me. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, what is your decision? Did you hear something? Mm -hmm. it sounded like it was coming from behind me. Dustin started to ask questions from the judge's seat. Now, when those questions were being asked, it sounded as if there was a, a response coming through. Come forward and address this court. Should treat this court with respect. Do you feel that you were misjudged? Is there still any members of the jury still here? Do you feel that you may have put the wrong person to death? There seemed to be a noise coming from somewhere. It was very, very hard to pinpoint. We're not quite sure what we'll have got until we go through analysis. All right, so this is courtroom number two. Um, the weirdest claim is that the hand that is said to appear comes up right over the edge of that guardrail right there. That's why we've got the camera on it. Another time he's walking through, and he hears a woman's voice, out. They kind of put that on the spirit that's said to be here. They've nicknamed her Ivy. Ashley, you've got the handy cam. You can take the jury box. We each took a corner of the room. We brought in many different um, devices. I had uh, the mini TV, and Brandy was taking full spectrum shots all around the room, and Rob had a bunch of his uh, different uh, audio equipment at the judge's stand. All right, it's an EVP session. This is myself, Joe, Brandy, and Ashley in courtroom number two. Ivy, we've come here looking to speak to you tonight. Are you willing to come forward? Ivy, let one of us smell your beautiful perfume. Ivy, why do you tell people to get out of here? Well, Ivy, if you're not going to communicate with us, perhaps our hand without a body will come forward. To the man who presented their hand, would it be possible for you to do that again? Grab my hand. Joe is offering his hand to you. Joe, any phantom hands by you? No. Okay, just checking. 
Let's get everything together and get packed up. Court is adjourned. I know for myself, uh, with working with Paul and Dustin, we adopted our EVP questions to the setting. So I'm looking forward to going through that particular EVP session to see if we've got anything at all. Okay, guys, the courthouse at Hobart. I know that there's a few things that were going on in the courtroom, Paul, that we want to check up on. Yeah. So, Ashley, if you wouldn't mind covering the DVR system for us. Joe, would you cover the uh, the mini DV tapes for me, along with the thermal? Of course. Brandy, you've got the audio, and uh, we'll see what's there. Okay. Hey guys, I'm going over some of Rob's deep IR pictures that he was taking. Ashley, you were with him in the execution yard. He thought he had seen what looked like a shadow or something like that. Okay. I got the shadow. Really? Right here. Here's the noose. And you can see... Yeah, off to the right. Behind it, there's some oh, type of dark it's mass. it's darkness. It's kind of hard to see. Yeah. If I brighten it up, and you can clearly see that... Yeah. Ah, it's it isn't nice. anything paranormal. Yeah. It's actually just the reflection well, from the IR that he was using. Okay. Nothing paranormal, it, then. It's it's not a spirit, but uh, at least we were able to understand what was going on there at the time. So let's move on. Hey, guys. I've got some video here. It's Dustin. He's doing his solo investigation. He's up in the clock tower. The reports are in there that the clock stops. Yeah. He's got proof of the clock stopping. You're not going to believe what it is. Well, guys, welcome back to the courthouse. I'm interested to hear what you've found. Yeah, I think uh, it was a really good case for us because the diversity of the stories, it gave us a lot to kind of go after and see if we could document or come up with alternative explanations for. So, for example, in, you know, in courtroom two, you had heard the voice. Hey. Um, we used six different recording devices, a variety of techniques. Unfortunately, there was no out, there was no voice at all. Mm. We moved out to the gallows. We had the story of the noose swinging by itself. Sick. Unfortunately, nothing really came forward, um, nothing attached to that. Now, there's one other that, being in this room, we have to touch upon, and that's the door opening. Oh, yes. We tried to figure out exactly what was making that door open. We stomped around, we checked for temperature differentials, we checked the door handle. The door never opened for us yeah. um, throughout the entire evening. I'm not surprised. I've seen it happen twice in 25 years. No. You mentioned the clock. I did some investigating up there. Um, you know, you seem quite skeptical on it. I mean, you know, is there a ghost that's stopping the clock? You know, what could be a normal reason for it? And uh, I have a couple of things to show you, actually. Okay. Here, Brian, is obviously the bottom of the pendulum the itself. Pendulum, yes, yes. If you try to grab that part of the pendulum and stop it, it's got a lot of momentum. It doesn't stop easily. No. As you see, it starts to wobble a little bit. Uh, and what I was doing is I can show you up top. If something was to, to just hit that, it actually causes a shift enough in the momentum where it does come to rest. Now, as to what could be doing that up there, uh, that's what I wanted to try to find out. And then what I was able to, to notice as I continued uh, investigating, in the facade, there are these, uh, these holes, uh, and you have a lot of nesting up there. Um, and beyond the nesting, there's also droppings of uh, not only birds, but also um, mice. And it's not too much of a stretch to think that if something does bump into that, it's enough to cause that, that sway, to break that inertia, and to cause it to come to rest. Obviously not the only explanation, but certainly something that's feasible. Yeah, no, I can, I can live with that now. All right, Brian, so here's what we've got. Right. You know, if we were to come in and we figure out why the door opens, we figure out where the voice that you heard came from, then we would come out and say, the place is definitely not haunted, and here's why. But unfortunately, that's not what happened. Based on the fact that going through all the evidence and trying in each situation to look for both the alternatives and the paranormal, given the fact that we did not retrieve anything paranormal, obviously we can't come out and say that it's haunted. All I can go in is, you know, from my own feelings and the things that have happened to me, yes, we, um, we have things that happen here that we cannot logically explain. Yeah. And that's probably that's the way it will have to remain. Brian, we had a great time here. Mm -hmm. You have been a great host. I've really appreciated having you here. All right, thanks, Brian. All right, thanks, Brian.
the fact that a team of investigators from GHI couldn't find logical explanations for the things that happened doesn't change anything in the building. There are things in this building we cannot explain because of some paranormal activity. We went after the claims activity. We came back with some solid ideas of what was really transpiring there. Yeah. And that's what we do, man. So it was a good it was a good case. You know, let's keep it moving. That's it, brother. Rock and roll. Welcome to Malaysia. Um, as we know, Brandy's not with us, and Ashley is going to fill us in on what we've got. Hey guys, so we're going to Kelly's Castle. It was actually built by a man named William Kelly Smith, and he came over from Scotland in 1890 when he was 20 years old. Now, when he got here, he got into planting rubber trees and became rich, and returned home to Scotland to marry his love, Agnes and brought her back to Malaysia in 1903. Soon after, they had a daughter, and they named her Helen. Now, to celebrate both his family and the birth of his son, Anthony, William Kelly Smith hired around 75 workers from India to help build what is now Kelly's Castle. Illness killed half of the Indian workers. William Kelly Smith died before he could complete the castle, and uh, the government took control of the property in 2000. Now, we've been called in by Taj. He's a representative of the castle because everyone in the surrounding communities believe that this place is haunted. So overall, guys, there have been a lot of crazy things captured here and heard here and seen here. All right, well, I don't see many other castles around. Then again, I've never seen one that quite looks like this. How are you? Hey, How are you? Hi. How are you? Welcome to Kelly's Castle. You see, it's raining. Let's head on inside. This is the mysterious corridor, is it? Here, I have lots of visitors who have seen the apparitions of William walking along this corridor. I've seen some kind of an apparition who happens to be a European person here at the second floor corridor. The moment I look at him, it seems that a few seconds it vanished. And this happens quite a number of times, and I've seen that. There were people who saw lights flying around the side of this corridor. And they had it on tape, you know. So, it's amazing. Is it possible to, that we could see that tape? It's possible. I think I can get it for you. Terrific. Yeah? Okay. Right. We move on to see the daughter's room. People have seen the apparition of the daughter, Helen, appearing from this door and walking towards that door and vanish. She was about six years old, white blouse, curly hair, just like a typical Scottish girl. We had a girl where she has seen a lot of dark spirits hanging around here. She was so scared. She just refused to walk in this room. I feel this place is haunted. That's why I called GHI to come and investigate to prove whatever is here at Kelly's Cross. Let's go. Even though that a lot of the reports of activity are based around William, uh, Kelly's castle is filled with a lot of strange goings on. See if we can catch that all the way up there. So we don't know exactly uh, what we're in for tonight. All right, obviously no DVR tonight. Yeah, no electricity, Rob, so we need to be covering the area of the corridor where reports of that operation was said to walk back and forward, so we want to be monitoring that. Without DVR, we want to make sure that the handy cams are out there all night, so we got full coverage. All right, no lights to turn off. Let's get okay. to it. EVP session, Barry Anderson, in the uh, stable. You ever told that uh, a woman has seen many spirits within here? 
Well, they claim they have certain abilities. Are there any spirits here? Is there any truth to what she said? While we were in the stable, something strange happened. Dustin asked a question, and there was a strange vibration uh, toward the left-hand side of my ear. Try that again, Dustin. There are any spirits that remain within this, this building, within these walls. I ask you to please come forward and let your presence be known. It's been a long time, probably, since you've been asked to come forward. We're trying to reach you as best we can. I'm starting to get goosebumps. I ask you to please come forward and let your presence be known. I'm starting to get goosebumps. While we were in the stables, the energy, the, the feel of the place seemed to change. Why is it that you stay here? Can you tell us your name? I'm smelling incense. Come over here. Yeah, I can, I can pick it up right here. I'm smelling incense. Hindu. There was a, a very strong and uh, pungent aroma of what uh, what seemed to be incense. Uh, and of course, the, the link there being uh, the Hindu religion that was practiced by so many of the workers here. Are you indicating to us that you actually come from India? That you yourself were Indian? You're someone who worked here. Did you have to build this place. Wow, that's getting really strong. Yeah, it is. And the wind's not picking up. There's nothing carried from outside. Did you die of Spanish influenza? Where's your home? And since uh, smell has faded away, then? Yeah, yeah. We tried to reach it, and um, we're hoping that we did. Um, it was certainly a wonderful experience for me, and I'm sure for Dustin as well, to, to have smelt that, that, that very strong smell of incense filtering through that particular area. That was an interesting uh, experience. It was. It was certainly something I wasn't expecting. No. William is often seen at night okay. pacing this walk. So we'll get the camera turned on. Barry's got it positioned and uh, start snapping some pictures here. Ashley and I did an investigation on the second floor corridor. Uh, this is the area in which William has been seen multiple times strolling up and down. William, can you come out into the hallway? Come on, William. It's your castle. We have a few cameras going to capture your image. William, show yourself to us. Well. Wow. <laughs> Sound like someone tapping the railing. Mm -hmm. sign of him? Nope. Just you. I walked down the hallway and walked back. Nothing else followed up after that, so we have to label something like that as just a building settling. This is Paul and Joe. We're in Helen's room. Helen is supposed to be sitting in this doorway. One of the reports is an apparition in the doorway of Helen's room. So basically, um, what I decided to do is leave the, uh, the, the 360 running um, and, and give Helen the opportunity to, to just come forward on her own and, and talk into it. Helen, we're here just to talk to you. We're not here to hurt you. Trying to communicate with a child, I decided to actually crouch down, put myself on uh, the same sort of level as a child would be, and actually talk as if I'm talking to a child. You know, if, if you'd like to come forward, um, and show yourself to us. We'd very much appreciate it. What was that noise? What is that? What the hell is that? Is 
that some kind of animal? We believe it might have been some animals or some um, insects that are in the uh, surrounding area. That's a pretty strange animal sound. Yeah. It's definitely some sort of creature outside. I mean, that's just going to play serious havoc on the, uh, the audio. Helen, I'm going to need you to speak very loudly. I'm going to need you to shout for me, please. Because Joe and I, we, we want to talk to you. But unfortunately, there's a, there's a lot of animals outside making a lot of noises. Now's a good time, because it seems that the monkeys have stopped. So if you can just talk to us quickly. We did attempt to interact, and, and we're going to have to wait till we get to analysis. Um, but fingers crossed, we uh, we caught something. Concluding EVP session. I was taking full spectrum uh, photographs from around the property, primarily from the outside to see if there's going to be anything that should show up in any of the windows, doors, or, or out in the property itself. That's strange. What's that? In the process, something unusual has shown up. Yeah, that's bizarre. There was something red, like a red light has shown up in one of the images. What the hell is that? And from what it looks like um, on the back of the three-inch screen, it's well in front of one of the walls. I have to go up and look at that. I tried to come forward to see if there was anything that would reflect the light against the front wall, um, and the only thing that I could find was a, a very unusual lizard. I'll, I'll have to get a look at that on the bigger screen uh, to uh, come to some sort of conclusion as to what it may have been. Let's get the lights on and meet back at Central Command. Kelly's Castle was definitely a big investigation. We made sure that we did this place completely from top to bottom. Review's gonna be tough, but I look forward to seeing what the team finds. We're going into the evidence analysis now of Kelly's Castle. We were running a huge amount of, of equipment to try and capture as much evidence as we can. And of course, we have to remember as well that video footage has been given to us. So we want to get a look at that. Guys, I was outside taking photographs and uh, there, was a, there was an image that caught my attention. It was this light that seemed to appear. I thought we honestly did have something there that was moving. Whenever I see it now on the big screen, um, it's not, unfortunately. It's just raised up that little bit more above the wall where uh, I had illumination in the hallway. It was very hard to see in the three-inch screen. We used red lights as an illumination. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, we just have to uh, throw that away. Here, guys, have a look at this video that was given to us by, uh, by the client. This was taken up in the second floor corridor. That's creep wall. What is that? Good to see you, Tosh. Good to see you again, man. So how's it going? Real good investigation. Good. Do you have anything to show? Yeah, yeah. yeah. First off, within uh, Malaysia uh, itself, you guys have a huge uh, firefly. Uh, firefly. Yeah. Uh, uh, and just around this castle, there is tons of uh, fireflies that we were noticing throughout the night. OK, OK. I want to play this video for you here. Mm -hmm. Whoa, fireflies. look at the firefly. That's pretty awesome, isn't it? Yeah. Well, there's your rollback activity. Yes, people see lights. OK. Some people come in here uh, with the understanding that the place is haunted, and it's kind of in their mind. So when they see things like this, uh, it's easier to jump to the conclusion that it's uh, ghost activity, it's spirit activity. Mm -hmm. 
and this is also a possibility as to why people are seeing these strange lights in the hallways. Mm -hmm. uh, the fireflies, uh, you know, there's white ones, there's yellow, uh, yellowish green, and a light red color. So Taj, I just want to, uh, to share with you, we're gonna take a look at uh, one of the videos that you had given us uh, that was taken in the second floor hallway. Yeah. Okay, here's the lights. Yeah. And you see it kind of had a swoop pattern to it. Right. Uh, actually, it's a bat. It was a bat. That was a bat. Uh, what the thing is, uh, with this camera, um, like in many devices, you can change the settings. Mm -hmm. You can change the length of the exposure. Mm -hmm. And because of the way this camera was set, you're getting that trail effect. Mm -hmm. And it looks like these you know, mysterious swooping lights in the hallway, mm -hmm. uh, which in fact is just the, uh, the, the eyes of the bat that are reflecting the night shot being sent off from the camera. The IR light coming from the camera is reflecting okay. in the bat's eyes. All right, all right. So Taj, Helen, seen in her room. Yeah. Is she here? What are people really seeing? Mm -hmm. People have seen the full apparition mm -hmm. of William walking mm -hmm. around in this area. Mm -hmm. What did they see? We, we can't come in and answer that for you, I'm afraid. All our camera footage, everything that we had uh, tried to record throughout the night, yeah, unfortunately, yeah. no sign of them. No sign. No sign. Um, you had uh, brought us over to the uh, the horse stables, yeah. uh, and you told us the story of the spirits. Yes. And I was uh, down in the horse stables uh, with Barry. As Barry and I are in there, there was this overwhelming scent of incense that just completely took over the room. Oh. And it was very interesting because of what you told us about the Indian employees who came here yeah. to build this place, and their close ties mm -hmm. uh, to the Hindu belief system. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and as you know, incense is in many of the rituals uh, yeah. in the uh, Hindu faith. Hindu faith, yeah. Yeah, it was. Mm. And it's one of those things that's, we, you know, we can't explain it. Okay. So it comes down to this. As far as the evidence that we collected, we're not able to say that the castle is haunted. Okay. You know, I, I, hopefully we answered some of the questions you brought yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. Sadly, we have to leave some of them open, continue the mystery, and mm -hmm. see where it goes from there. So at least I had some answers today. Yeah. Okay, thanks to you guys. All right, All right Taj. Okay, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank, you. you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. All right. Yeah. The investigation that GHI has uh, undertaken in this castle, I think uh, what they showed me was, I wouldn't f say that it was haunted, but more of a mysterious castle. And this castle is now, again, safe for visitors. So even though we weren't able to answer all of Taj's questions and the mysteries he put out there, I think we did give him a, a couple steps towards answering some of the questions he had. And, um, you know, I think that this will put him in a better position in the future to look at evidence and say, you know what, this appears to be X, Y, and Z. Yeah, I think the important part uh, on Taj's behalf is that he took away from this an understanding of what some things could look like, uh, why some people might think this is paranormal when it actually isn't. It was cool, though. I mean, we were able to... Uh, uh, kind of add to the to the legend of the place and the incense it was really potent and it was very noticeable it's definitely interesting that you both picked up on it whether it was paranormal or not you know i still got barry working on the smell meter <laughs> well it was a good case taj is happy i'm happy yeah rock and roll no i say rock and roll <laughs>